So, today's demonstration is about pressure, as you probably saw on the, uh, on the posters. There's a couple of surprising things about pressure, but the intuitive thing everyone knows is that things under high pressure tend to go pop. Okay? So, I've got one very good demonstration. Uh, I, I never thought of doing that, but that, that would have been a perfect demonstration. Um, another thing I wanted to show you is uh, a similar type of thing, except I'm generating the high pressure by using some dry ice. This is carbon dioxide. By the way, I meant to mention at this stage, uh, this is our special guest. His name is Flat Stanley, and he's come to us all the way from Calgary, and he doesn't want to stand up. He was standing up perfectly just a second ago. There we go. He's come to us all the way from Calgary, and he's come to have a look and learn a little bit about science. So, uh, what I'm going to do is this dry ice here, it's at about minus 78 degrees, it likes to turn into a gas. It, it goes straight from solid to gas without ever being a liquid, which is called sublimation. And uh, as soon as I put a stopper in here, the carbon dioxide gas that you can't see at the moment will build up pressure and fire out the cork. And I'm going to aim it above your heads, just for fun. There you go. Well, cool. Okay. So that's that's kind of the intuitive side of pressure. Everyone knows that's what happens. But what a lot of people don't realise is that there's pressure on them all the time. I mean, not metaphorical pressure, but atmos atmospheric pressure. And uh, that's quite a considerable force. The reason you don't really feel it is there's always an opposing force. So um, in the case of this Coke can, for instance. There's a pressure on the inside, that's atmospheric pressure, and there's a pressure on the outside, and that's atmospheric pressure too. So the two are equal, no movement is observed. What I'm going to do is show you what happens when we remove one of those two forces. So the reason I've got it on a hot plate like this is there's a little bit of water in there, which has been boiling for some time and has filled up the can with steam. If I turn this upside down on some water, that will remove the steam and remove the atmospheric pressure from the inside. And you see, the can imploded. Wow. I wanted to show you on a larger scale as well, just to be absolutely <laughs> sure. Now, I haven't actually tried this because I only had one container, so I don't know whether this is going to work or what it might do. But I wanted to show you. So I'm going to take this off of here, put a stopper in the top, and then cool it down with a little bit of water and see what happens. <laughs> I've got to wait until it starts to seal. The stopper is not a very good fit. I think that's happening now. I'll pour a little bit of water on it, that'll cool it down. seal, but it is still... <laughs> now, the seal is not complete. It's actually just sucked all that water inside. And you can see it has collapsed a little bit on the side there. So, not a perfect demonstration, but I did warn you. Um, I have actually seen this done with a 55 gallon oil drum. There are videos on YouTube of that. Um, but you need a good seal on the drum and I can't find one at the moment. But I'm intending to try again next year with a larger container than that. Um, so at this stage, I'm going to stop demonstrating my stuff and uh, Dr. Spooner over here has um, a demonstration of what happens when you remove the pressure from outside something instead of inside. What we have here is a bell jar, which basically, well, with this pump, I can remove all the air from inside that jar. And inside the jar, well, we see this balloon. At the moment, there's pretty much atmospheric pressure inside the balloon and atmospheric pressure outside the balloon. So there's, well, reasonably high pressure inside, and what I'll do is see what happens when we remove the pressure from the outside. Right now, 
the atmospheric pressure is pretty much 14 pounds per square inch. So it's a, the balloon has an area of about 15 square inches, so it's more than uh, 150, maybe even 180 pounds worth of force compressing that balloon just to, due to the air. Now, if we remove the air, the inside air will be pushing out, but there will be, be no outside air pushing the balloon in, inwards. And, well, we'll see what happens as I remove that air. I have a leak somewhere. Now you see it's growing because there's less pressure outside squeezing it. Because there was no more outside pressure uh, compressing it, that inside pressure was able to um, push the edges of the balloon until it popped. And that's what happened with Zoth. Thanks very much, Dr. Spooner.